All right, so let's pause for a minute. I'm going to pass out. Or Rizwan, can you help me out here? Let's pass those out. <clears throat> All right. So I'm passing out uh, uh, printed tutorials to the um, folks in the room here. Folks on the phone, what we're going to do is uh, open up the GMAT user guide. So in your GMAT fundamentals folder here, um, that should be in the bundle that we posted to Google Drive, um, there's a file here called GMAT users guide. So we'll open that up and look at the table of contents and there's a chapter here called tutorials. And the first tutorial is called simulating an orbit. Uh, you're looking for page 52 and actually folks in the room if you want to bring it up on your computer uh, if that's easier for you you can just open the, the user guide go to page 52. Um, And you'll see what we're doing. So, so I'm calling this a uh, sort of a hello world example. And the reason I say that is as a mission analysis tool, the most basic thing you could ever do with GMAT is just create a spacecraft and propagate it for a set amount of time. That's, that's like the simplest use case uh, for what GMAT can do. But it illustrates some important things. So we're just going to do it interactively here to, to give you a sense. Um, so folks on the phone, uh, on your own computers, you'll need to open up this PDF. Rizwan, are you tied into the WebEx at all? Are you logged into the WebEx? No, I'm answering one of the questions. Okay, good. Oh, okay. I think one person is all right. I was going to suggest if you are able to log in also, then um, folks can ask you questions on the little chat window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not okay. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I'm suggesting that um, I'm going to close this tutorial and start using GMAT on the screen here. So um, <clears throat> you'll have to open it up on your own computer and. Uh, if you have issues with that, um, you can either email Rizwan at the email I sent out earlier, or you can uh, chat him on the WebEx um, chat feature. All right, so to start GMAT, just double click the icon there on the desktop, and you'll get this uh, startup window here. So uh, there's this welcome to GMAT window. Um, I'm actually not sure why on this computer it, the links aren't here, but this should be showing links to our web page and whatnot. Um, and then there's some recent scripts. Um, they'll be different on yours because I've been running things, but some sample missions and things will, will um, show up there. So just close that. And what you'll see is the uh, GMAT desktop. Um, so some important features here are, uh, let's see, so uh, we have the menu bar here, that's where you see the file commands. We have uh, some tree views, uh, resources, missions, output trees. These here are called resources. So we have a resource called default spacecraft, default IB, that's impulsive burn, propagators, orbit view, coordinate systems. And then we have a run button whose job is to actually run the mission that's defined right now. Okay, So <clears throat> you can actually run this 
as is without making any changes, and you'll be running what's called the uh, GMAT default mission. And you get some windows you can play with. But this is not doing exactly what we want, so let's go ahead and close everything. We can actually open up a new mission. Uh, there's a new mission um, button here, new mission. We'll just click that. It'll say, do you really want to load a default mission? You'll say yes. And then we're back sort of where we started. So following along the tutorial, we start by uh, operating on this spacecraft called Default SC. So Default SC is not a very good name, so we're going to right-click it, choose Rename, and you'll get this Rename window here. And we're going to type in the name SAT. And we'll use that for our new uh, mission name. And you'll see that uh, now the spacecraft is, is renamed for you. Now, <clears throat> let's double click it, open it up. And we'll get what's called the spacecraft properties window. So just to give you a little tour, um, this is the spacecraft window. So these here are epic uh, properties. So you can set your epic format and your actual epic value here, format value. Here's coordinate system, state type, and here's your orbital elements. So right now this is set to Cartesian. So uh, we have here the Cartesian elements, x, y, z, velocity, x, y, z, and some default values associated with them. So the default values are not exactly what we want. So according to the tutorial, let's go ahead and choose uh, UTC Gregorian. They're on the list for the epic format. And we'll set the epic value to just something uh, different than the default, 22 July 2014, 11, 29, 10, 0.811. Now that format's a little bit specific. You actually have to type in all those um, values. All right. Click apply. And now we'll actually set the uh, the state. So here's the state type drop-down list. Um, you'll notice things like this list is a lot bigger than it was previously. But you'll notice things like uh, the default is Cartesian. We're going about to use Keplerian. Uh, we have spherical types, uh, three different types of equinoctial. Here's a Delaunay state. Uh, Outgoing and in incoming asymptotes for uh, for flyby trajectories in the planetary, and then we have two different types of uh, Brouwer-Ledane mean elements, both short period and long period. So for the purposes of this, let's just choose Keplerian. You'll notice the state elements change automatically, and we'll type in the values from the table there in your tutorial. Okay. So all I did there was enter in the values from that table um, and press apply. You notice that the units are labeled here next to the fields. 
And keeping the door closed so that going to be talking all day. We're getting some uh, some feedback on the phone. Maybe somebody's unmuted, not muted. Thanks. Okay, and now we press OK, and that finishes the configuration of the uh, spacecraft. All right. Now we'll move on to the propagator. So here we have a default propagator. Let's just go ahead and rename it to uh, something more descriptive. We'll call it low earth prop. Since we put our spacecraft in a low earth orbit, we want a propagator that uh, uh, is applicable to that orbital regime. So we'll start by calling it low earth prop. And then we'll go ahead and open it up. And when you do that, you'll get this window. So this is actually a divided uh, window. There's two sections. The first section is integrator. The second section is force model. So the left-hand side is all to do with uh, integrator setup. So here we're using a runge cutter integrator. Initial step size is 60 seconds. Here's our accuracy value and min and max step size. And then we have a checkbox here that says um, if your accuracy is not, uh, uh, cannot be met at the current step size, do I stop and throw an error or do I continue and throw a warning? So that's what that checkbox is for. On the force model side, Notice what we've configured here. So our central body is Earth. That's good. We're in a low Earth orbit. We want the central body to be Earth. Uh, and we have a primary body is also Earth. So in GMAT terminology, a primary body is anything with a complex force model. Okay. So uh, if you set a, uh, if you want just Earth point mass, you don't necessarily have to put it as a primary body you can put it as a point mass down here. A primary body is specifically something with a gravity model, with a drag field, um, more complex uh, types. And in the current implementation anyway, the central body and the primary body have to be equal. So the only changes we're going to do here are Right now, this is set up as a 4x4 four four gravity model. We're going to change it to a 10x10, 10 10, just to give it a little more fidelity. We'll keep it using the JGM2 gravity model. And then, uh, in terms of drag, notice that we have four different drag uh, um, models that we can use, atmosphere models. MSIC 86 and 90, NRL, MSIC 2000, uh, Jakia Roberts. Folks on the phone, I think we'll see fewer of these. Um, I can't remember which ones we've made public and which ones uh, are internal. But for the purposes of this, let's just go ahead and run. Uh, we'll change this to Jakia Roberts. And you'll see a setup button that just allows you to, we'll keep these at default values, but this is where you would set your solar flux and, and uh, geomagnetic properties and whatnot. And then finally, uh, we'll go to this point masses box and we'll add a couple point masses, third body point masses. Um, let's go ahead and add sun and moon, uh, which we're calling the name of the moon in GMAT is just Luna to keep it distinct from the generic moons. And then we'll select solar radiation pressure. All right, so the only differences we've made here are uh, degree and order 10. We had Jakia Roberts. We added Luna and Sun, and we checked solar radiation pressure. Click Apply. Click OK, and we're done with the force model configuration. All right, now 
you can run this as is and it will give you something, but you won't be able to see uh, the full orbit because we changed the, the shape of the orbit. We need to configure the view window so it will actually be at the right distance from the Earth to actually show the full picture. So what we'll do now is we'll open up default orbit view. So GMAT's 3D graphics uh, window is called an orbit view window. Um, so we'll just double click on default orbit view, which is our uh, default configured properties. And we'll start going through it. So there's lots of different things uh, in this orbit view window. Um, everything from, uh, you know, number of data steps to record to stars and constellations to uh, axes and grids to uh, here's where you choose uh, which spacecraft to plot and which celestial bodies. So here we're plotting our spacecraft sat and we're plotting the Earth. Yep. Oh, sure. Uh, that's a really good question. So the question from WebEx was, is it possible to add your own drag models um, via a MATLAB code or MATLAB plugin? Uh, the answer to that is currently, well, you can add drag models, but it requires use of a C++ plugin. Um, so let me just pause this right now and go back, since that was an excellent question. Everything OK in your department? Good. I think somebody's uh, not muted on the phone there. So for purposes of explanation here, for answering that question, I'm just going to go ahead and change to Mars in terms of central body. And when I do that on the internal release, this is not a public thing. On the internal release, oh, uh, there's one drop down that, that allows you to select Mars Graham 2005 atmosphere model. Uh, the reason I point that out is that it's actually, this model is actually added to GMAT through a plugin, it's, so it's not built into the code. Um, when we go over uh, the plugins, we'll sort of discuss that more. But in short, uh, through a MATLAB um, interface, no. Through a C++ plugin, uh, yes. And there's examples for that. All right, I'm just resetting my configuration here. All right, so we were looking at the orbit view properties. Um, the main thing we're interested in here is the view definition. So. This is sort of a complex interface uh, for a pretty simple conceptual thing. Thank you. It's actually on this guy. So the view definition is actually asking uh, where is your camera with respect to uh, the origin of your coordinate system. So the view is uh, with respect to a coordinate system. This is how you specify that. So your view is in the Earth J2000 coordinate system. Now this panel is setting up where is your camera located and where is it pointing. So uh, here we're using a viewpoint vector. So this is placing the camera. And right now it's set to a distance of 30,000 by zero by zero kilometers from the origin of this coordinate system. And actually from the reference. Um, so uh, this is 30,000 kilometers from the Earth in the Earth J2000 coordinate system. 
and we're pointing back at the Earth. All right, so that's just the placement of the camera and where it's where it's located. And then because you can rotate around that uh, focal point in any you know parallel uh, in the plane of the screen, you can rotate. We also have a definition here for what is up. What's the up direction? And we're saying the up direction here is is positive z. So for the purposes of the tutorial, we've already come up with numbers that will work. We're going to set values of negative 60,000, x positive 30,000, y positive 20,000, z. Apply that. And for clarity, let's go ahead and uncheck draw xy plane right there. So we're going to clear xy plane, click apply, and click OK. All right, so that concludes the uh, setting up of, of resources. And now we're going to go to the definition of the mission. So what I'm doing here is I'm just clicking over on this mission tab here, mission tab. Click that, and you'll get uh, what's referred to in GMAT as the mission sequence. All right, so mission sequence is just a list of commands. You can have um, many commands, thousands of commands, um, that define a time-ordered sequence of events in your mission uh, uh, lifecycle. So for this basic mission, there's only one command called propagate. So we'll open it up and take a look. The fact that there's just one command is OK for this tutorial, because all we're doing is propagating. When you open it, you'll see that uh, this propagate window, which has a you know several features here. Here we have a propagator. So remember, this is our low Earth prop that we've configured before. Here's the list of spacecraft that's being propagated. We have our one spacecraft sat. And now we want to configure our stopping additions. So you can't propagate without a stopping addition. It, it, it will just propagate. Well, it won't let you, but it would be telling GMAT propagate for an infinite condition, and GMAT's not going to do that. So you have to supply some sort of stopping addition. And the stopping condition is in terms of a parameter and a condition. So right now, this parameter says, I want the elapsed seconds of my spacecraft to be equal to 12,000 seconds. So it's just going, this command is being told, propagate until my elapsed seconds equals 12,000, and then stop. So for this particular example, um, we want to propagate to orbit periapsis. So not a particular amount of time. I want to go to periapsis of my orbit. So what we're going to do here is click, uh, let's see. You see this ellipsis button right there? We're going to click that, and that will show a list of, of parameters. Okay. So these are all parameters associated with spacecraft. We have our particular spacecraft there. And here's the list of object properties. So there's probably hundreds here, hundreds of things that you can choose from. Um, so you'll select it, click the uh, left arrow, and add it to the selected values list. So what we're interested in is a parameter called periapsis. So we'll just scroll down. to get to periapsis. Okay, so we chose periapsis. This box is going to pop up that says, what central body do you want periapsis with respect to? It doesn't particularly know that you care about the Earth. Um, you could be interested in Mars periapsis or Sun periapsis or whatever. The default happens to be Earth, so we'll just keep it there. And then we click this 
uh, right hand arrow, and now our value says sat dot earth dot periapsis. And we'll click OK. And now here's our condition sat dot earth dot periapsis. Uh, sorry, that's our parameter. Notice there's no condition here because um, periapsis just is, it is a an event. It is a condition. It doesn't need a condition associated with it. All right, so click Apply, click OK, and we've configured our propagator. Now we can actually go ahead and run it. So I click this Run button right here, the right-facing triangle. And what you'll get are two graphics windows. The top one is the 3D. The bottom one is the 2D. Um, all we really care about at this point is this 3D orbit view window. So go ahead and maximize it. And you can use the mouse commands to sort of move it around. You can right click. Zoom it in and out. And if you zoom it out enough and rotate it just so, you can clearly see that we started here at apoapsis and we finished here at periapsis. And actually, you can see that more clearly by, uh, I'm going to click this animation button here. So see this animation toolbar? Um, we have a run toolbar that actually runs the mission, and then we have an animation toolbar that allows you to play and reset the actual animation for that window. So if I play the animation, I'll have to slow it down a little bit using the left-handed, uh, the left-facing arrows. And you'll see the spacecraft start at Apogee and propagate to Perigee and then stop. How do you zoom? Um, right, right, right click, yeah. Work. Right drag. Yeah. Oh, right click drag. Right Okay, any questions about that? No, this it's only controlled by the bar by the um, the increase and decrease speed. So one thing we're going to talk about later is that uh, GMAT is really a a sequential processing tool. So what you're seeing when you speed up and slow down that window is it's actually stepping by the steps that the integrator returns to it. So it's going integrator step by integrator step. Um, so the graphics window is not, uh, one discussion we had in earlier training was, is it, uh, can we get it to animate at a constant speed instead of speeding up at perigee and slowing down at apogee? Um, the reason for that is it's going by propagator steps. So one way you could do it, you could integrate by fixed step, and that would solve your problem. Uh, the graphics window is not doing any sort of interpolation um, for you, so that's, that's why that um, effect happens. Okay. So just for the purposes of discussion, there's a couple other things we could do here. Um, you could propagate by a certain amount of time. Let's just show that. So going back to your propagate command, one variation of this is 
instead of propagating to uh, periapsis here, you could propagate for a particular amount of time like we saw before. So you could choose uh, elapsed days instead of periapsis. So here I'm choosing elapsed days. And I can set my condition to 2. So here parameters elapsed days equal condition is 2 days. If I run this out, you'll see a much more complete orbit. Now, it's not a full period. What if I wanted to do a full period? Well, I could open up Propagate, change my parameter to um, elapsed seconds. Okay. So parameter is elapsed seconds. The condition, I want to say propagate for elapsed seconds equal to the orbit period of, you know, Keplerian period of my orbit. So for a condition, instead of a number, I'm going to choose a parameter here, and I'm going to choose the parameter orbit period. And I'll say orbit period with respect to the Earth. Okay. And so I'll get this sort of construct. Parameter is elapsed seconds equal to orbit period. Uh, the seconds here matches the units of the orbit period parameter. I'll click OK run my mission and here we get a complete orbit period of propagation You mean frame by frame or step by step? Uh, you, you, uh, hmm. yeah. You pointed out the lack of a pause button. You can, you can stop it. But then it restarts. Yep. Can you zoom in, zoom out on the 3D? Well, you can zoom in. Like here, I'm going to zoom in, and then I can animate again. Uh, hold down the right mouse button and and move it, move in and out. Yep. Can you write that down, Rizwan? The pause button on the animation. I think we have that in our feature request list right now. It's just not done yet. Um, and the only other thing let's talk about here is the. Uh, now, what if you wanted to do this? from a script. I mentioned GMAT has a, both a GUI mode and a script mode. Um, it's sort of personal preference whether someone prefers to do that with a script or with by clicking buttons. If you did do it in a script, this is how you would do it. Um, you, you would start from a blank file. You would write uh, create spacecraft, name set. You would add in your date format and your epic like we did interactively. You would set your Keplerian state. Uh, this next portion is configuring the force model. So um, create a force model, create a propagator. In the GUI, these are combined. In the script, you create a force model and a propagator, and then you assign the force model to the propagator. 
and you would configure your properties here. So here's our central body, primary body, both earth, point masses, SRP, here's your gravity field, and here's the Jakia Roberts atmosphere model. Uh, in terms of orbit view, uh, here we're creating the orbit view, adding our two uh, bodies, setting the viewpoint vector, and turning the plane off. Now the mission sequence is just one command called propagate. Uh, there's the name of the command. Here's the propagator and the spacecraft you're applying it to. And then here's the list of stopping conditions. We just have one called periapsis. Any questions on? That was supposed to be the first uh, sort of intro to actually clicking around in GMAT and using it. Uh, any questions at this point? Everything you can do with the GUI, you can do with the script. Yeah, we'll go into that after the break a little bit. Um, GMAT actually, when you click around in the GUI and click Save, it writes out a script. So they're completely interchangeable. Yep. When you edit the script by hand, once you've made one of the GUI. Oh, yeah. Yep. Probably a fifth one there. Right? Yep. And we do that a lot. We'll, we'll configure things in the GUI and switch to writing script stuff and then go back to the GUI and right. yeah. Which presentation is this? Uh, it's in the tutorials folder. Yeah. Simple uh, no, sorry. Um, simulating an orbit script.pdf. Are there functions available by script that are not available by GUI and vice versa? <laughs> You're leading me into my next presentation. There's a couple. There's a couple. Minor. We try not to do that. <laughs>